I forgot about this dough for three weeks in my fridge and let's see what happens when we are going to bake it. The color looks a little bit strange here on this dough. It's actually a whole wheat dough, which I made with my default recipe, which I'll be linking right here. And yeah, then I went on vacation and I didn't have time to bake it. And then I sort of forgot about it at the bottom of my fridge. And I'm really curious to bake this and see what's actually going to happen. But first we will use one tool to check something on the dough. I'm using a pH meter with which we can measure the acidity in the dough. Oh my goodness. So this is a sourdough, but this has actually so much acid that we could probably dissolve a human body inside of it. Maybe an idea for another business. So let's bake this anyways and see what happens. I'm adding a little bit semolina flour so it won't stick to the Dutch oven that I've already been preheating. Let's see if this dough will actually let go of the banneton. Oh boy. <laughs> yes, it did. That was much simpler than I expected. Let's give this a score. This is looking a little strange too. It's definitely very cold. Scoring was so easy. I'm gonna give it a spritz. And then it will go into the oven. Upper bottom heat, 200. 30 degrees Celsius. Check out this banneton. This is completely soaked and some sort of jello style consistency. And this is so wet too. Oh, I shouldn't have tasted it. <laughs> it's really, really sour and tastes a little strange. Very excited to see the final bread. So half time. Are you as excited as I am? Phew. Let's open this. <laughs> it even opened up a little bit. Uh. Oh, it smells so sour. Just by, just by my nose, this is way too sour, but we're gonna let it finish bake and then we will try this and see how it actually tastes. And the final bread, it even got a little bit of oven spring. I didn't expect that, but I think maybe that was because the dough was just so stiff. It held together because it was cold and then we got a little bit of oven spring. The crust formed, so it wasn't able to float outwards. Let's see how this is looking on the inside. I'm gonna cut a few slices. Now I can't wait to taste this. I've never had a dough ferment for three weeks before. The crumb is relatively dense, but here my high hydration whole wheat dough, it's very moist. That's what I like. Let's test this. I don't know what to say. Wow. I really expected the tang to hit me in the face but it's not that much. Maybe it is because during the baking time, a lot of the acid actually evaporated. So it's sour, yes, it has a big tang to it, but it's also hearty because it's a nice whole wheat bread, but it's not as sour as I expect it to be. So now let's quickly talk about what actually happened with the dough. My fridge was set to around six degrees Celsius or around 43 degrees Fahrenheit. And the lower the temperature gets, the less active the microorganisms inside of your dough are. That's why it takes a long time for food in your refrigerator to catch any mold. But me personally, I always thought that six degrees Celsius is already too low for the sourdough. But as this unwanted experiment has shown, both the yeast and both the bacteria is still active at this low temperature. This means for you that if you are out for way too long, then it might be that your sourdough is going to starve inside of your fridge. Of course, things are slower, but fermentation seems to continue inside of the fridge. And I think that's a really cool learning. And then secondly, we learned one really, really interesting thing about baking. The pH was very low of the dough. This means it was very, very, very sour. Now I didn't dare to taste the dough before. I probably should have done. 
But what happened is, in the end, the final result wasn't as sour as I expected it to be. And that's because at around 120 degrees Celsius or 250 degrees Fahrenheit, the lactic and acetic acid are boiling inside of your dough. This means the longer you bake, the less of a tang you're going to have. Actually, acetic acid, which is very vinegary, is boiling a little bit faster than the lactic acid. So I think this has been a really cool experiment. I hope that you learned something new. And as always, may the gluten be with you.